Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I'm going to be making the most delicious pumpkin ravioli you have ever had. I'm using butternut squash, don't tell anybody, but you can use pumpkin. The reason why I use butternut squash is because I have a very hard time finding like like sugar pumpkins, like the kind of pumpkins that you can cut and eat that they're small. Um, all the pumpkins around me are like the ginormous, they're like the decorative pumpkins. So I always go to butternut squash because it's the most similar squash to, the, it's the most similar squash to the pumpkin, right? It's sweet, beautiful, vibrant color. I've also made this with acorn squash and it also turns out well, but I pr much prefer it with butternut squash. If you can find eating pumpkin, use that. Let's get started. I'm gonna start off by roasting some pumpkin. A lot of the recipes you'll find for the recipes for pumpkin ravioli, um, you could use a canned pumpkin, pumpkin puree, and you can, but I think roasting your own pumpkin and adding it flavor and then adding that to the dough and the filling is just dynamite, and that's what we're doing today. You'll need some uh, squash or pumpkin. I just went ahead and cut it into these large pieces. I left the skin on just because it was easier that way, but it will peel off easily um, when I need to use it. A few cloves of garlic smashed. I left them in their skins pretty much just to prevent any burning. And then I have a mixture here of paprika, chili powder, a little bit of turmeric, and just a little tiny bit of nutmeg. It just kind of echoes that fall flavor and it goes really well with pumpkin. So we're gonna love adding that. A little bit of sage, add a little bit of sage to this. I'm not going to puree all of the herbs in here because it can get a little bit bitter. Uh, so I just leave them whole, but the thyme, you can go ahead and sprinkle the thyme in. I do a couple of stems here of some fresh thyme, and then just a touch of fresh rosemary, because again, it just goes well with squash and winter and roast and all that fun stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's a good flavor profile. Now to it, we're gonna add some olive oil. The oven's already preheated to 400, by the by, and a good, healthy pinch of sale and a few groundings of pepe and give everything a good schmooge around with your hands. And that's, I mean, it's really not that much more work than opening up a can of pumpkin, right? It's not, but the reward is phenomenal, so it's a must. I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this into my hot oven. Listen, this is beautiful by itself. This roasted, on a salad would be phenomenal. So take that for like a two for one. I'm gonna pop this into my hot oven, I have to wash my hands, until the squash is really tender and it's a beautiful roasted color. It shouldn't take that long, maybe about a half hour. So every oven's different. So it will take between a half hour to an hour. And I know that's a really big time stretch there, but like I said, every oven's different. This oven downstairs cooks ferociously fast. My one upstairs, slow as bud. So depending on what you use, you'll get two different times. But basically, let your eye be the indicator of when this is done. Wash my hands and throw this in. All right, my butternut squash is just so gorgeous, if I do say so myself. Look at that beautiful color. I'm just, I let it cool, clearly. So I'm now just peeling off the skin. Actually, it's much easier to do this when the butternut squash is really hot, but then you risk burning your hands and nobody wants that. So I'm just gonna go ahead, peel my squash, add it all to a standing, I was gonna say standing mixer, that's not what I meant, a food processor, thank you very much. For the garlic, I'm just taking it out of the, the uh, skin here and adding it straight in just like so. And I'm gonna leave the herbs behind because like I said, they can tend to be a little bit, they can be a little bit bitter after you roast them. Um, and I don't want any bitterness permeating my squash. The thyme is fine, but the rosemary and the sage can be a little bit bitter sometimes. So I just leave it behind. They've infused the oil that then surrounded the squash and the squash cooked in. So I'm not really worried about it. Put the lid on, and if you could taste the squash right now, you would be in heaven. It is like sweet, I wish I had some. <laughs> um, spicy from the chili powder, it's phenomenal. I'm gonna puree this until it's really nice and smooth, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, that is done. Getting it all out of here. It doesn't look like a lot. I'm not making a huge batch today because, um, well, I don't have anyone to feed a huge batch to, 
and I would eat them all by myself. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so now we have the puree. Can you just, can you just hold your thoughts? Por favor, hold on, I forgot my measuring spoon. Okay, to the food processor, I'm gonna add flour, wait, the blade, the blade. Then we'll add flour. This is so easy, you're gonna be like, what? Make sure you dump some on the counter so I feel, I feel somewhat uh, normal. An egg. Yes, ma'am. A good pinch of salad. A turn of olive oil. And a bit of my pumpkin puree. Boom. Where's the top? Whiz it up until it turns into pasta dough. That is it. All right, pasta dough came together. I forgot to tell you that I made a full batch of pasta dough with half the batch of the puree, which is why I was like, wait a minute, I need an extra egg. <laughs> That's okay. Um, you can also use this pasta dough, like a fettuccine, and put them into like a little Alfredo sauce. Oh! Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm just gonna let it sit in the fridge for a half an hour to relax. We'll make our filling, um, and then that way everything will be ready. And um, yeah, step closer to eating. Now we're making the filling. In the same food processor, just take out any pieces of dough. You're gonna add some herbed goat cheese. You don't like goat cheese? Add ricotta, I don't know what to tell you. But the mixture of tangy goat cheese, especially the herb and garlic goat cheese with the sweet uh, pumpkin or squash or whatever you're using, let me tell you, divine, divine. Okay, add your squash or pumpkin, whatever you're using. Add that right in. And then you're gonna just add a little bit of parmigiano. Parmigiano, I don't know why my camera guy keeps laughing at me and now I'm thinking there's something wrong with me. So if there's something wrong with me, just deal with it because I don't know why he keeps laughing, but it's making me very uncomfortable. Camera guy's my husband, if you're new here. But I don't know why he keeps laughing at me right now. If you don't, maybe leave a comment down below as to why you think he's laughing. Where's my lid? Ah, maybe that's what it is. Okay, just blizz it up until it's pureed. That's what you're looking for, like that. Doesn't look like a lot of filling, but trust me, you only need like a couple teaspoons per ravioli. And uh, like I said, we're making a small batch anyway, but let me tell you this, because you see, I think about these things just a little too late, because that's how I'm built, okay? If I was smart, 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 I would have been making a couple batches today, freezing them and adding them to my freezer so that they are ready for Thanksgiving or any last minute gathering. Um, and you could whip up in a jiffy, uh, a homemade pumpkin ravioli, brown butter and sage Parmesan walnut sauce, literally in like four minutes. But I'm just, I'm just not thinking that far ahead and I wish I had. However, I did make a double batch of the sauce. So I technically do. I did think ahead because I will be making fettuccine, but I will be keeping those in my fridge because we will be eating those this week. Make no mistake about it. I'm gonna pop that into the fridge along with the dough for like a half hour until I clear my desk here and then we get rocking and rolling and making our dough. Well, rolling the dough, you know. Okay, flour your surface a little bit. Hi, can you see me? Hi, <laughs> this thing in the way, but I can't help it. I can't help it. Okay, dough was in the fridge for like a half an hour. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it in quarters. Here we go. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm gonna keep the other three covered. Like so, like that. Eh, that's good enough. I do like to roll in some flour, make sure nothing sticks. And then I kind of, this is gonna sound really weird, but to fit it into the pasta machine, which by the way, you can just roll really thinly by hand. I tried to form it into like a rectangle um, so that it's just easier to fit into my pasta machine. Um, you can have a little, little rolling pin kind of help you out. Um, just, it, it's helpful so that you can actually get it into the pasta machine. Okay, that's good enough. 
I can just tell that this is going to be great. Look, there's still some thyme in there. See, little thyme leaves, a little bit of the spices. Okay, I got to bring this closer to me. Am I plugged in? I think I'm plugged in. Bring it closer to me. We start at one and we end at around seven. So shake off the excess flour, but you want to make sure you do have it dusted with flour, otherwise it sticks. And here we go. Last pass. This was still the original quarter. I just had to cut it in half because it gets so long. Beautiful. I have to cut it in half because it gets so long. I'm just gonna go ahead and work with this for right now because, um, you know, I uh, wanna get the show on the road. Okay, this is a ravioli maker, if you will. Uh, they're not expensive at all. They're really, really inexpensive. They'll last you a lifetime and a half. Do I have flour on my face? I just feel like I have flour all over me. Anyway, you take your sheet, which your pasta roller uh, will pretty much roll it out to the exact width that you need it. Don't pull it taunt. You want it to actually not be super taunt because you're going to take, this is sort of the insert that forms your wells. See that? That's what I like, that's what I like. Nice and easy. Easy peasy, Papa Sal would say. You're gonna take some of your filling. Don't overdo it with the filling. You need literally just like a couple teaspoons each. Like that, maybe a little bit more in that one. That one just seems a little, a little too like that. Some of the water just to help, help everything seal. You can see that when you have a machine that rolls it out for you and a little thingy like that, and then you put your second sheet on top, okay? You push your filling down like so, like that. Take a rolling pin. And then just, this is how you cut them out. And when you see here is just the air. You can also just do it like that, but it works out perfect every time. You just have to make sure they're really cut out there, otherwise they'll stick. And then I just place them onto a baking, baking sheet that I have lined with parchment paper and a little bit of semolina, and that's it. Tell me that's not the easiest ravioli you've ever made in your whole life. <laughs> They're really, really easy and really simple to do. Um, and what you can do at this point, which I'm going to, I'm gonna just pop them into the freezer for like 10 minutes. I'm only gonna cook up this small batch. I am gonna continue to make a few more. I'm gonna cook up a small batch. I'm actually gonna make a little bit more because I have some more dough. Um, and then I'm gonna put, put, put them in the freezer for like 10 minutes while I get the water come up to a boil and get everything ready to cook them. But I am gonna go ahead and just just do it on the quarter, okay? Because they're so good. You're gonna want them for dinner. They're so phenomenal. Like I can't think of anything better than like this for dinner, a really simple spinach salad, maybe a kale salad or something like that um, with maybe some dried cranberries and apples and like a maple balsamic vinaigrette um, and that with a warm baguette and a lovely crisp glass of wine. And pff, if that ain't heaven, I really don't know what it is. Do not get rid of these. These are gonna be cut into tagliatelle and I will be saving them in the fridge. Okay, ravioli were in the freezer for 10 minutes. I mean, they are just plump and gorgeous. I love them so much. Get yourself a ravioli little maker. Uh, we're getting the sauce going, which is a really simple brown butter, sage, thyme, walnut, parm situation. Water coming up to a boil. I want this to be so simple and I want it to be so beautiful and just to marry with the flavors of the ravioli. Because remember, in the ravioli we have garlic, we have spice, we have warmth, so there's a lot going on. Your sauce does not have to be really heavy, um, but trust me when I tell you the nuttiness you're gonna get from the brown butter is gonna be the star. Like, it's just so good. With the parm, it's divine. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding, remember I'm cooking a small batch. I am adding my sage leaves and some thyme 
to my butter and I want that to turn into a really beautiful golden color. Once it starts to get like really golden, then we can add the walnuts. I don't want to add them too in advance because they will burn. Um, so I'll just leave them. It's almost where I want it. The sage leaves are going to get really nice and crispy. I mean, we are just about ready to get this thing going. Now that the butter is a nice golden color, we're going to go ahead and add some chopped walnuts. And I'm just going to let everything get a really deep brown butter color, which it won't take very long at all. And once it's there, we will drop the ravioli in the boiling water, but I don't want to do that until, well, this is just about where it needs to be. And by the time it's there, the ravioli will be done because the ravioli are only going to take a couple minutes to cook. So I'm actually just going to drop them in right now into the salted boiling water. Like I said, they don't take very long, so, and I am cooking a small batch, so I'm gonna add them all at the same time. If I was cooking a bigger batch, I would absolutely not add them all at the same time, um, or they just get a really gummy mess. See, this is perfect. That is exactly what you're looking for. That is flavor to the gods right there. I'm actually gonna turn it off. That is perfect. I like to leave the whole time in there just because it's pretty. And then it smells so good. These babies are done. Yes. Beautiful. Like I said, they only take literally a couple of minutes. You get them coated. Oh, honey. Mm. I want a bit more black pepper. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And then, parm. Beautiful. That, my friend, I mean, that is luxe, if I do say so myself. I'm gonna turn that off because I do not want to risk overcooking these gorgeous pillows of absolute heaven. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you. I really am very mad at myself for not making the entire full batch today because I would have loved to have had these in the freezer and ready for Thanksgiving or like any time I need like a, a special little something to throw together or if I just want some ravioli in the middle of a busy week and I just can't make myself a fresh pasta on a whim, you know? Disappointed in myself, but it's okay. I have extra dough. I will make it work, but these would be fantastic to just make, keep in your hand, keep in your fridge, or your freezer, I should say. And then you have something really luxe ready at a moment's notice. They look beautiful. The sauce looks beautifully bronze. The sage is crispy. Can you hear that? Thumbs up if you can hear that. It's actually so good when you crisp up herbs. Sage is one of those herbs that just crisps up, crisps up really well. And the ravioli, the texture of the pasta is phenomenal. You can see it doesn't fall apart, it becomes a gloopy mess. The filling is just creamy and delicious. All together, There's a lot of balance of flavors. Tanginess from the goat cheese. The nuts are vital here for me. Mm. I'm gonna go take a photo before I eat the entire bowl. Laura and the kitchen are come. They're like not really sweet, but the flavor is there. They're phenomenal. Laura and the kitchen are come for the written recipe. I hope you enjoy spending time with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.